Welcome to the Online Public Information Center for the Peel Street Bridge Pedestrian Conversion. This presentation will provide an overview of the project, including any structural deficiencies and repairs required to the existing structure, as well as options for the configuration of the new pedestrian deck, the potential deck material, as well as potential types of railings. The construction of vehicular turnarounds at the approaches of the bridge will also be discussed. Finally, we'll touch on the schedule and next steps for this project. Structure 270148, also known as the Peel Street Bridge or the Winterbourne Bridge, will be rehabilitated for pedestrian and cyclist use. On this slide, you can see some photos of the existing structure. The following is a brief summary of the scope of work for the rehabilitation and pedestrian conversion of the Peel Street Bridge. The existing deck and steel stringers beneath the existing deck will be removed and replaced with a new walkway through the existing trusses. The walkway will include a new pedestrian railing and a lookout area located over top of the center concrete pier. There's also plans for a heritage plaque highlighting the historical significance of the bridge, which is planned to be installed with the aid of the Township's Heritage Committee. Due to the change in loading on the bridge, a capacity limit will be posted at the bridge, which will be finalized based on the preferred configuration of the structure. The approach to the structure will be modified to include a turnaround area for vehicular movements, including snowplows, garbage trucks, and emergency vehicles. A pathway from the turnaround up to the bridge will also be constructed, complete with gates to prohibit vehicles from accessing the bridge. This slide shows some of the structural deficiencies of the Peel Street Bridge. Steel members throughout the structure have deteriorated and will require repair or replacement. Wherever possible, repairs to the various members on the structure will be of similar size and appearance to the existing member. To address the known structural deficiencies, the following repairs are anticipated. Concrete repairs to abutments, piers, and wing walls, replacement of bearings at the abutments, and repairs to truss members throughout the structure. Note that the final rehabilitation scope will be confirmed in a detailed design phase following the determination of the preferred design. The proposed pedestrian conversion will incorporate a new, narrower deck for pedestrians and cyclists. Three configuration options are being considered for the deck as follows. A continuous walkway adjacent to the upstream or downstream truss, which would go straight through for the entire bridge. A staggered walkway adjacent to the upstream or downstream truss, which would alternate between the east and west bridge spans. Or a narrower walkway centered on the bridge. The new walkway is anticipated to have a width of somewhere from 1.8 to 3 meters with the final width depending on the option selected, the materials selected for construction, and the structural capacity evaluation. Option one is for a continuous walkway along either the upstream or downstream trusses of the bridge for the entire length of the bridge. The walkway could either be on the upstream side of the bridge as shown in this rendering, or the downstream side. Note that only one railing style is shown for simplicity. Railing styles are discussed later in this presentation. As shown in this rendering, there would be a wider lookout over the center pier, which could also contain the heritage plaque. Also shown is a P-gate at the entrance to the walkway, which would prevent vehicles from crossing the bridge. Here's a video showing the deck configuration for option one. The walkway for this option would be immediately adjacent to either the upstream truss as shown here, or the downstream truss. Here you can see a widened lookout area at the center pier, which could also contain the heritage plaque. And at the end of the bridge on the left, you can see an example of a P-gate that could be used to prohibit vehicles from using the bridge. Option two is for a staggered walkway on either the upstream or downstream trusses. This option is similar to the previous option, however, as shown in the rendering, the walkway would alternate locations between the east and west truss spans. Note that only one configuration of the staggered walkway is shown in this rendering, and that the locations of the upstream and downstream walkways could also be reversed. Here's a video showing the deck configuration for option 2. The main difference from option 1 is that the walkway for option 2 would switch sides at the middle concrete pier. You can see that as we approach the middle concrete pier here. And as you can see, the walkway is now on the downstream side of the truss.
The third option considered is for a walkway centered on the bridge. Similar to the other two options, a wide and lookout platform would be located on the center pier. It is anticipated that this option would provide more flexibility for a widened walkway or reduce restrictions for capacity loading on the bridge. Again, note the P gates installed at the bridge entrances and that only one railing style is shown. Finally, here's a video showing the deck configuration for option three. For this option, the deck would be centered in the middle of the structure as shown here. Similar to the other two options, it would have a widened lookout area at the center concrete pier, which could also contain the heritage plaque. We are interested to hear your feedback on these deck configuration options, so please let us know your thoughts. Contact information for the project team is provided at the end of this presentation. The new deck of the walkway could be constructed from a variety of materials, including wood planks, laminated wood, weathered steel deck panels, galvanized steel deck panels, open steel grating, open steel grating with a bituminous wearing surface, fiberglass reinforced polymer or FRP decking, and concrete. In general, the initial cost of the decking system and the anticipated service life increases from top to bottom of the list. The next few slides will show some examples of each decking system. Photos on the left show examples of a standard transverse wood plank deck, where wood planks are secured to the members below. Photos on the right show examples of a transverse laminated wood deck. Laminated decking consists of wood boards nailed together on their sides. The current Peel Street Bridge deck is a transverse laminated wood deck with a tar and chip wearing surface. Next, we have some examples of steel deck panels. The photos on the left show steel deck panels made from weathering steel, which is brown in color. The photos on the right show steel deck panels coated with a galvanized protection system, which are more gray or silver in appearance. Next are open steel grating deck systems. The photos on the left show an exposed open steel decking, whereas the system on the right is an open steel deck covered with steel panels and a bituminous wearing surface on top. Finally, shown here are photos of a concrete deck as shown on the left and an FRP deck as shown in the photos on the right. The following table shows a qualitative summary of the various deck material options. We note that the maintenance considerations do not consider maintenance activities that are present for all options, such as spring and fall cleaning. Materials that are lighter in weight are more advantageous from a structural perspective due to the capacity limitations of the existing bridge. We are interested to hear your feedback on these deck material options, so please let us know your thoughts. Contact information for the project team is provided at the end of this presentation. Next, we will discuss railing options on the bridge. Note that the existing railing will remain where possible, but it is not suitable as a pedestrian or cyclist barrier. The rehabilitation provides the opportunity to install a new railing to protect pedestrians and cyclists while on the bridge. A lattice railing, arched picket railing, and a conventional railing are being considered as part of the design process and will be discussed on the next slides. Option one is for a lattice railing, which would be similar in appearance to the railing system that is on the Glasgow Street South Bridge, shown in the photograph in the top left, but without the grey guide rail mounted in front of the railing. This barrier does not meet the current safety standards and would need to be accepted by the township. The second option is for an arched picket railing system similar to the railing at the Jack R. McDonald Bridge in Delora, pictured in the photo in the top left. This type of railing meets current safety standards and has a higher degree of aesthetic appeal, however it would also carry a higher fabrication cost. The third railing option is a conventional railing. This railing would be simple in its design and would be less aesthetically pleasing. The railing option would meet current safety standards and would also have lower fabrication costs. Once again, we are interested to hear your feedback on these railing options, so please let us know your thoughts. Contact information for the project team is provided at the end of this presentation. The rehabilitation of the Peel Street Bridge will permanently restrict vehicular access across the bridge. Therefore, the approaches to the bridge will each require a turnaround area to be constructed to allow for larger vehicles such as snowplows, emergency vehicles, and garbage trucks to turn around. A pathway from the turnaround leading up to the bridge will be constructed, complete with P-gates and or bollards to delineate the pedestrian pathway and restrict vehicular use. 
Examples of pea gates and bollards at the approaches to a pedestrian bridge are shown in the photos at the bottom of this slide. Here you can see a concept of the proposed turnaround on the west approach. The remaining roadway to the east of the turnaround will be converted to a pedestrian pathway leading up to the Peel Street Bridge. Shown here is the concept of the proposed turnaround on the east approach. Similar to the west side, the road to the west of the turnaround will be converted into a pedestrian pathway. That concludes the overview of the conversion of the Peel Street Bridge to pedestrian use. Following the conclusion of this public consultation center and the question period to follow, comments received will be reviewed and taken into consideration by the Township as they progress into the detailed design process. The Township intends to hold another public consultation center to communicate the final design concept in advance of construction, which is anticipated to commence in 2022. In an effort to move forward with design and construction in 2022, we ask that all comments be submitted no later than November 30th. Questions can be submitted to Ryan Tucker at the Tam Triple Woolwich and or Matt Scott at GM Blue Plan Engineering Limited, the engineering consultant for this project. The Township values your input on this project. Thank you for attending this online public consultation center and we look forward to receiving your feedback.